Hey guys, happy Thursday. It is Thursday, July 30th, 2009. I'm actually recording this on um, Tuesday night because my friend and I are going camping tomorrow night. And then the next day we're gonna go see Chris Pirica in Santa Cruz. Yay! And we're very excited. So this week we're kind of sharing general gender stories and things that have come up for us um, lately or our favorite gender mess up stories and stuff like that. At least I think that's what the topic is this week. Um, and I really feel like I've already shared my favorite ridiculous gender stories, such as the airport and riding in the airplane for five hours with a man who used male pronouns with me and someone thinking that I was a boy because I spooked horses, a woman in France sending me into the men's bathroom, all of the above. These are good stories, but I've already told them. So this week I thought I would do a general check-in and a quiz at the end. So life's going pretty great these days. i um, about to have a giant transition. Um, I've been working at the video store for like a year and a half um, and just kind of doing my own thing and taking a bunch of classes. And um, my last day at the video store is this coming Friday. And then I say goodbye to my free rentals. That's really a giant bummer. Um, and then I'm going home to Boston for two weeks. Yay! Uh, I haven't been home in like a year and a half or something. Like, it's been a really long time since I've been home. I think it was like March or May of last year. I, I don't know, but it's been a while. So I'm going home, and then I'll be back, and then a week later, I start graduate school. It's just going to be a huge transition for me, so I'm kind of at the nearing the end of this phase of my life, and it's exciting and scary all mixed together, but that's my next step, so that's what I'm going to do. In terms of gender stuff, I've been feeling okay. Um, I'm really enjoying the fact that I understand my gender as best as I can tell. Um, and I really do feel very in-betweeny and um, okay expressing feminine things because I don't want to pretend that they're not there. And I'm okay expressing more masculine things like the pronoun thing and whatever. I've come to a really nice balance with it all, so it's cool. Okay, so the second thing I wanted to do was um, do a quiz from my Gender Workbook by Kate Bornstein. Your Gender Aptitude. Section 6. No Gender. Number 1. Which of the following statements most clearly matches your idea of gender? A. Gender simply is. If you don't like yours, get over it. B. I've been working on my own gender for a long time, and I'm getting to the point where I may actually have made it my own. C. I think there's a lot about gender that we don't know about yet, and I wonder why that might be. D. Gender is what happens to me when I get dressed in the morning. That's a really hard question, um, but I think I'm going to go with B. I've been working on it for a long time, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Number two. Which one of the following statements most nearly matches your feelings about gender? A. My what about gender? B. I guess my feelings range anywhere from anger and frustration to happiness and exhilaration. C. Gender confuses me. I don't know why it is the way it is. D. I feel, I feel, I feel a song coming on. Hmm. I don't know. B or C. That's kind of a hard call. Okay. Three. This is why I'm bad at multiple choice tests. Let me just point that out. Okay. Standardized tests and me don't get along. Three, has there been any time when you've felt you have no gender? A, no, I'm never really aware of my gender anyway. B, no, I'm very aware of my gender nearly all the time. C, maybe sometimes when I'm alone or I'm in some situation where gender doesn't matter. D, lots of genders, no genders, what's the difference? Yeah, in some situations where gender doesn't matter, that's nice. C. Four, have you ever questioned the nature of gender itself? 
A. No, it's not polite to question Mother Nature. B. I question the nature of my own gender, but gender itself? No. C. I question gender, but I get the spooky feeling that I'm not supposed to do that. D. The nature of gender? Isn't that an oxymoron? Hmm. Have I ever questioned the nature of gender itself? Yes. I guess C. Though it says it, I get a spooky feeling I'm not supposed to do it, and I feel like I'm absolutely supposed to question gender. But whatever. Kind of C. I definitely question my own gender and gender itself, so it's not B. Anyway, C. Five. If there were no more gender, do you think there'd be any more desire? A. Well, of course not. That's why it's impossible to reach a point of no gender. B. That's a good question. I'll have to ask my group. C. My head says no, but my heart says yes. D. Oh dear, you really think a little thing like no gender is going to get in the way of my sex life? Wow. Uh, D. I would pick D. I surprised myself. Uh, six. If you woke up one morning and discovered you were neither a man nor a woman, you would A. Kill yourself or stay in hiding the rest of your life. B. Discuss this new development, development with your group. C. Read the rest of this book as fast as you could. D. Yawn and get dressed. Haha. <laughs> D. 7. Do you think there's some sort of connection between your gender and your spirituality? A. My gender and my what? B. Well, yes, it's all about yin and yang, and the inherent duality and non-duality of the universe, isn't it? C. Perhaps gender is part of my own spiritual challenge. D. My what and my spirituality? Hmm. B or C? I don't know. I told you I'm terrible at multiple choice. Okay, moving on. Uh, number eight. Have you ever killed off part of yourself that you didn't like? A. There's really nothing about myself I don't like. B. I've let go of parts of myself that I haven't liked, yes. C. Sometimes. Are you saying that applies to gender? D. Oh baby, want to see where I stashed the bodies? Well, like, I've tried to improve myself. I don't really think that has to do with gender. C. 9. Why are you reading this book? A. I certainly didn't choose to read it, that's for sure. B. I think it's important to try to understand what it is that other people experience. C. It's been dawning on me that maybe these might sort of be, well, my issues too. D. Because nearly everything else about gender has been positively dreary, darling. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, C. Okay, number 10. Last question. If you thought this book was leading you into some sort of radical gender change, you would A. Stop reading and throw the book away. B. Finish reading the book and then sell it at the used bookstore. C. Put the book up on a shelf and read it a whole lot later. D. Ha ha ha. Kate would never lead anyone into that unless they wanted to be led there. Combining B and C, I would finish reading it and I would put it on the shelf and read it again. Give yourself five points for each A answer, three points for every B, and one point for a C, and no points for any D. Well, that sucks because I didn't write it down. I'll figure that out one sec. Okay, so after some very mathematical scribbling with my tiny little pencil, uh, I have determined that my score for this section is a 14. Unfortunately, I haven't taken the other quizzes, so I can't get my gender aptitude. If I were going to, if I had a really low score, then I'm a gender freak, and I know all about it already. And that goes all the way up to someone who is as far away from Kate Bornstein's gender ideas as possible, uh, Captain James T. Kirk. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. I hope you did too. So I'm going to end this so that I can edit it and get it all done. I hope everybody's doing great and having a really, really good... Um, end to their July. Oh, also, my band is playing a our third show on August 1st, which is Saturday, this coming Saturday, at Magnet in San Francisco. And if you guys live out here, you should come, because it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Bye.